a bit questionable. It's like, oh boy, gravity is, is sort of uh, heavy. <laughs> but uh, this last week's been great. I've been doing rehab and getting a lot of my agility back as well as my strength. So I feel pretty great. Now, I once heard that you get taller as a result of being in a weightless environment for an extended period of time. Is that true? Um, that is true. We, we took a measuring tape with us up there and we measured ourselves and I uh, gained about a centimeter or so and it was really obvious and that was early on in the mission. It was really obvious when I was getting into my launch and entry suit. It was a little bit tough because it was a little bit small. And it, because it's such a custom suit. Exactly. Now, um, uh, did you, uh, I remember also something about you cutting your hair and you gave it to, what, with the Locks for Love or something like that? Because you're, well, what happened with that? And then they brought it back, right? Um, it was cut on the Space Shuttle Discovery before we even opened the hatch for the space station. And uh, my friend Joni Higginbottom brought it back. And it was donated to an organization for helping uh, cancer patients with, uh, with hair uh, uh, wigs. Yes, it yeah, was. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, now, tell me what you find to be, uh, you know, most significant about what you accomplished, what you did, what you discovered, uh, studied in, in that time uh, in space. Well, you know, um, part of the being up there is just understanding what happens to the human body after an extended period of time in space, and that's sort of uh, leading on to uh, helping us get back to the moon, potentially having a space station there, and from there understanding, uh, you know, what it is like to live on a, a different type of body planet, moon, Mars, before we go on to Mars. And so it was a, a lot of studying on the human body and how uh, you react to living in microgravity for a long period of time, and you touched on it already, is what happens when you come back to a gravity environment for example, Mars, and if you can function. Have they learned anything uh, new by studying you so far and your reactions to it? Well, you know, I'm just a, a different type of body type. If you've uh, checked out the other expeditions, you'll see people of different sizes and types. And so that's one of the things we're looking at is does one type of body type uh, do better than the other? Does one uh, react uh, or, or re recover a little bit quicker than the other? And how long does it take? And like I said, for me, it was probably about 48 hours. And then I think I was really ready uh, to do, you know, get up and go. So they, I think they learned a little bit from me. Yeah. Now, is there any difference, has any difference ever been found between the way men and women react phys physiologically uh, after extended periods in space? Well, I think that's uh, in research, but I don't think they have enough data. You know, we're up to Expedition 15 right now, and so that's not really all that many. So I think they haven't made any conclusive, um, you know, evidence on, you know, they don't have conclusive evidence on that quite yet. But I think so they're working on it. That, that'll be an interesting thing to find out. Um, uh, now, you have the record now for spacewalk time for a woman and time in space, I believe, for a woman. Um, I mean, that puts you up there with Sally Ride and a lot of other people. Uh, how are you? Do you feel any different, or how do you feel about that? Uh, I'm pretty honored. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I uh, broke the record on the day that Valentina Tereshkova, you know, the anniversary, anniversary of her flight, and uh, I didn't realize that right away. And when I heard that, it, I just sort of went, wow, I'm, those are people that I've always thought in my life were so amazingly impressive. It's hard to put myself even close to being in that same category with her and uh, Shannon Lucid and Sally Ride and people like that. It's just amazing. Well, it is quite an accomplishment. Um, how, how did you get along with your uh, co-astronaut <laughs> in space, male and female, up there a long time? Uh, I actually, um, great. You know, I uh, went up there with a the space uh, shuttle Discovery crew, came back with the space shuttle Atlantis crew, lived up there with one Russian and one American, and subsequent to that, lived with two Russians. And you know, everybody's professional, everybody's fun. You learn about their families when you're there for a long period of time, and it was just a wonderful experience when it comes to uh, sharing stories stories with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, you had uh, all the issues at the end there with the computers and all that stuff, and you guys did, uh, you were there longer, you didn't come home for an extra few days. What do you, what, what's your feeling about how serious the issues that were that popped up on the space station right at the end there as far as the future of the station? Oh, that's a great question, um, and I, I they tried to answer it a little earlier uh, about, uh, I think it's, it's a pretty serious, there was a pretty serious uh, problem, and it's just indicative of the fact that uh, though it's, we're in low Earth orbit and we're, we're building building a space station like we've never built before with huge solar arrays. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen. We do math modeling on the ground. We, you know, we have computer models on the ground, but we're not actually sure what's going to happen. So it is an experiment. It is an adventure. And we need to un try to understand that before we actually leave low Earth orbit for an extended period of time. So um, it is an experiment. <laughs> 
Well, Sonny, um, I, I noticed the Red Sox hat. We all noticed it. Um, <laughs> did you follow the Sox while you were in space? I tried. Uh, I got uh, updates uh, every now and then from from the ground. I got uh, baseball tonight, and I hope <laughs> watch that once a week. And I know oh, my Sox you? are still doing well. They're still beating the Yankees, and that's all that counts. <laughs> that's all that counts. That's right. And uh, we didn't even have a chance to talk. we got to go now. I know you do, too. But uh, congratulations on finishing the marathon, too. That was quite, quite an accomplishment. It's a pleasure to talk to you. And I know, again, uh, so many of your friends and family are excited for you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you when you return to New England. Thanks, All right. Sonny. Be there soon. See you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. We hate to cut that short, but we've got to get right over to London where they're holding a press conference on that uh, possible foiled terror attack this morning.